Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to more Stellaris. The new Aquatic Species Pack has been released alongside version 3.2, a major update for the game. Paradox was kind enough to get me early access to this DLC, and in fact is sponsoring today's video, so a big thank you to them for that, and of course if you guys would like to learn more, you can find a link in the description down below. Now without any further ado, let's dive into things, shall we? D did you see what I did there? I'm funny, I know it. I have created a new empire, the Hydrohomy Hydrocracy. Don't let the name fool you though, we are not your friends. If you do not appreciate water to the same degree that I do, then you will be converted, forcibly, with death. This is, of course, one of many new portraits that are available as part of the Aquatic Species Pack, some of which look very dapper, I must say. And the Aquatic trait itself is actually quite powerful, will be very, very strong on our preferred ocean worlds, with housing reduction, better habitability, which just means better production across the board, better food, energy, and mineral output, etc. However, we will be very weak on non-wet worlds, so we'll be okay on ocean, continental, and tropical worlds, but ocean obviously is our preference. Anything else? and we're a literal fish out of water. So this is pretty good in and of itself. We'll also make use of one of the new civics, anglers, which gives us a bit of a change to the way we're gonna play the game. Farmers can produce food as well as trade value, and we also gain pearl divers, which get us consumer goods and trade value. So our farming districts are gonna play out a little bit different and be a little bit more effective than normal. Not to mention, they'll be uncapped. As long as you have space on the planet, you can build as many agricultural districts as you want. So I thought, okay, Okay, let's go ahead and jump in focus on this idea of getting lots and lots of organic material from the ocean's depths and pair that up with catalytic processing so we don't even need minerals to make alloys. Instead, we will turn our copious amounts of food into alloys and build our ships from those. So this is going to be a very different way for me to play the game, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm also pairing that up with, of course, plenty of really strong science traits, rapid breeders, and we're going to take unruly and sedentary. I consider this one to be more or less a free pick since we can't exactly resettle to non-ocean worlds very easily now, can we? We're also taking advantage of one of two new origins. Ocean Paradise is the one I've chosen today, which is kind of like a Gaia world start, but arguably a little bit better. We will have rich food deposits and bonuses to happiness, pop growth speed, and output, and it's a size 30 home world right off the bat. However, the downside is our guaranteed habitable planets instead will be frozen worlds. Until we find a way to thaw those, we're going to have a harder time actually actually expanding off of our home world. The other alternative start would be Here Be Dragons. We'll start with a space dragon that guards my home system, but we have to continue to placate it or else bad things could happen. Will we live alongside it? Will we kill it? Will we tame it? No idea. But Ocean Paradise is the choice for me. And we also do get a new advisor voice to go alongside with the aquatic pack. Honest work means hard labor, low wages, and no fun. Sounds pretty good to me. All right, let's go ahead and jump into a new game. So here we are in our capital system, and notice that our planet has this wonderful modifier, plus 15% happiness, which will mean a lot of extra stability and production for me, 10% pop growth speed, and then just 5% resources across the board for all jobs. Pretty darn strong, if you were to ask me. As far as our population, you can see that we do have our anglers instead of farmers, so these guys are getting me some trade value as well as all that food, which actually is already getting some production boosts up to 10.7 instead of 8 because of some of the other modifiers we've got for us. And under specialists, we have our pearl divers, which is getting me some extra consumer goods right off the bat. This might actually be a pretty strong economical start because I can sell off excess consumer goods for a bit of extra energy and buy out the other base materials that I need. This could be really, really good. We will, of course, be stripping down our corvettes to salvage some extra alloys as much as is possible and take a look at some of these new ship sets. I actually should have shown you all the other ones, but man, do these look good. I am going to quickly adjust a few of my policies, also going to that isolationist for the extra early game unity. That can certainly be pretty helpful for us. And then let's go ahead and explore the map around me. I see a couple of nearby choke points. If we can grab onto any of these, that'd be great. But it might be a little bit harder to properly expand if we don't get lucky and find some new ocean worlds. And we already have access to our first round of traditions. Um, we're probably not going to go for expansion with these guys unless I can find out for sure that I have some nearby uh, ocean worlds, which so far we have not proven. So prosperity is probably going to be a good one for us. The extra mining station output is nice, but mostly you care about the stability and the extra resource from all jobs. Very, very powerful. 
There are, by the way, a handful of free updates that are coming alongside with this expansion, or I guess Species Pack, not technically an expansion. I'm not going to go down the list of all of them, but quite a few of them are nice. A few quality of life improvements as far as, let's say, not getting a million different pop-ups about your defense station buildups. Uh, the AI is supposed to be a fair bit smarter about how they develop their planets, which will be very good for when I inevitably do conquer them. And also a lot of new anomalies and events, especially when terraforming. All of that sounds like pretty good fun. Oh, it appears I discovered my neighbors. Three of them surprisingly close by. Well, hello. You guys didn't form some sort of like a Gemini thing, did you? No, it's just a bunch of tiny little guys. Okay, well, that's gonna be fun. Well, how do you guys feel about water? Do you like water? Because if you don't like water, I'm just warning you right now, we're gonna have a problem. You know, our population growth isn't half bad either. 5.4 this stage of the game? Not bad, not bad at all. And yeah, I'm making good use out of these consumer goods. We're selling a fair hefty amount of them off every single month, which is giving me plenty of energy to go ahead and make up for my deficit of minerals. So my economy is looking fairly strong for very little effort. I gotta say, I think that maybe these, uh, these pearl divers are pretty solid. They don't really require much in the way of upkeep. And what they produce is not half bad. Ooh, what's this? I found a relic world. Ooh, these can be kind of fun to deal with. Not exactly going to be good for my, my fishies, but, I mean, if we can ever figure out how to actually survive in giant water suits, uh, that may be fun to exploit. Oh, my first ocean world! Well, it's a real shame that it's protected by an automated dreadnought that wants to kill me. Ugh, the galaxy sucks. This is a horrible place. Well, we got our first round of combat. Space pirates! Go forth, my beautiful aquatic corvettes! Gosh, these things look so cool. I really should have shown you at the beginning of the video what all of the other ships look like. They did change that, so the ship preview can show you every different ship class, which is pretty sweet. Ah, we'll just have to build some battleships of our own. And you can see how cool they are. Ah, and I finished building my first robots. Because we are, of course, materialists, so we were gonna make use of these. This is a new little icon. Looks pretty cool, right? Sort of an aquatic robot? Eh, I like it. Oh my, the AI apparently has decided to declare war on me. Oh, that's lovely. All right. Well, we have a few ships available for defense. I'm hoping this means they're probably not going to be that strong, but they do have a federation amongst themselves, so that's part of the problem, I suppose. Let's take a look at that ship designer, by the way. Here is our destroyer. Gosh dang, does that thing look pretty cool and slick. I love the look of these new ships, dude. Oh, I finally finished a long expedition down here in the Relic World. Let's go ahead and bring the Central Command Core online. Uh-oh. Optimized growth. Shut up, shut up, shut up! Well, this, this doesn't seem good. Um, all right. An annoying tone plays. We're back. Sorry about that. Some things are hard-coded. You know how it is. We have so many questions. All right, we're here to help with them at every step of the way. Well, we seem to have found a somewhat psychopathic uh, AI system, which uh, there's a long story behind all of it. It effectively killed its owners because they stopped obeying it. Uh, that's going to be fun. Do you want to repair the world and the sludge that's currently eating through all of it? I guess we'll try. Sure, and now we have a new special project. Develop a cure for ferrophage. Yeah, but I'm kind of fighting a desperate war up to the north, so how about we make that a low priority, huh? All right, so this is where things start to get a little bit dangerous as I take on the Federation head-on here. Having the destroyer advantage is certainly going to be nice. If I can at least take out this spaceport and get a repair dock, it should be a lot easier for me to survive this. We've won a few fights, so I've got a good chance here, but, uh, yeah, it's... It's by no means a certainty by any stretch of the imagination. Ooh, gas. That sort of stuff would be nice to have. Actually, any strategics at all would be very nice to have right about now, but all right. The good news is, before they declared this war, we were able to get a migration treaty with a couple of different species here. So, um, we're still uh, able to continue colonizing different worlds. And once I conquer you guys, it's going to be even easier. Oh, the birth of the galactic community. Fantastic. Can you all get together and tell these guys to stop picking on me, please? I don't know what on earth I did to deserve their hatred. Oh, good. These guys actually do want to sue for peace. Fantastic, as I'm actually looking at my war exhaustion and feeling a little bit concerned, but all right, here we go. So, status quo, I should be able to gain these planets, and I'm pretty sure with the conquering of these three worlds, these two nations will cease to exist. Yep, case in point. All right, these guys just went poof, goodbye, thank you, suckers. All right, that actually went uh, very well. A little dangerous, I got a little concerned. I've been chipping away at most of my fleets, and by now, usually I prefer to have cruisers before I go to my first war, but all right. Nah, we, we managed to come out of that ahead. 
Oh, finally we get access to the cruiser tech. That's gonna make my life a heck of a lot easier. Get some serious firepower, and it'll punish all these fools. I'm also gonna try my hand at some terraforming. Some of these planets, you know, they don't have enough water. We can probably fix that, give them a heck of a lot of water, terraform the crud out of this, and then our glorious species will be able to grow. Oh, gosh dang it, I'm just now talking about getting cruisers, and what happens? These guys declare war on me again. Ah, gosh, the persecution against the Hydra homies is real, bro. Oh, we've also finished up our discovery tradition. It took a bit longer than I would have expected, but we got there. Now we have a new ascension perk, which we spent on something totally new, hydrocentric. Ocean terraforming becomes cheaper. Then we are allowed to build ice mining stations on star bases, which I'm pretty sure can be used to increase the size of an ocean world by just dropping in some ice cubes. So that's kind of fun, sure. Not to mention we get even more benefit for living on an ocean world, but it's even worse to live on non-wet worlds. And then finally, the Deluge Colossus Weapon. Don't think I can build that yet, but uh, you might be able to guess what that's gonna do. And the war just ended. Oh, I didn't even mean for that to necessarily happen. I guess I just gave them enough war exhaustion. Sweet, we conquered their capital world. That's 45 more pops for me, good lord. Oh, we finished repairing the care unit. Kind of forgot this guy was even a thing, to be honest. 10% uh, extra energy credits from jobs. On the relic world specifically? I mean, it's not massive, but it's not that bad. I could certainly build out a couple more generator districts. Sure, why not? Oh, here's something I didn't even notice. The care unit gave me a relic, the defragmenter. Looks like one heck of a processing unit. Robotic upkeep minus 10%. All right, that's a pretty nice passive effect. I don't mind that at all. And then if we spend 150 influence, we get some energy credits and research speed specifically in engineering. Wow. All right, uh, yeah, doink. I'll go ahead and press that. Engineering research is, of course, the best research. So what exactly do these ice mining stations do? Looks like in addition to the ability to expand my planetary sea, I get 15% mining uh, output in a particular system. So if I find a system that is absolutely overflowing with energy and minerals, placing down a star base exclusively to extract ice asteroids might not even be a bad idea. Hey, what do you know? I actually managed to get the galactic market. I don't think I've ever gotten the galactic market. Like in the entire time that I've been playing Stellaris, it just never seems to happen. Well, don't I feel like a lucky boy. All right, let's go ahead and mobilize our forces. We got some neighbors over here that I don't like. Whoa, hello. Some neighbors over here that I don't like. We're gonna go ahead and take all their stuff. This looks like a servitor for destiny. The heck is this thing? I don't know, it's terrifying. So I wonder if strike craft are still as extremely overpowered as they used to be. Well, I say overpowered, don't nerf them, Paradox, but you know what I mean, strike craft are exceptionally good. Are they still exceptionally good? Answer, yes. Yes, they're really good indeed, holy crud, bye. Hey, I'm now on the Galactic Council. Veto powers are mine, water for everybody. Ooh, battleships. Well, that war was easy enough. Okay, and now I have a whole bunch more planets I'm gonna have to worry about, but we are growing very, very rapidly. This map has honestly been kind of weirdly kind to me. I mean, we have so much open space still that we get to expand. I increased the number of players in the galaxy. I swear I did, but it doesn't seem to have mattered. One thing really worth noticing though, as I'm conquering these worlds, for real, the AI is definitely a lot better about building out some of these planets. The AI is actually building out proper districts and good buildings now. Which might be one of the reasons I'm finding that the enemy is putting up a bit better of a fight than I would expect at this difficulty level. They actually have resources to work with. They're playing smart. That's a pretty huge change, and it's gonna make my life a lot easier because I don't have to develop planets as much as I used to, and it's gonna make my life a little bit harder because I have to worry about the uh, enemy players being competent. I've decided I don't really care about my existing population and the people that we have conquered. The galaxy needs more water. We're gonna go ahead and start terraforming these planets. Oh no, please don't drown us! You should have embraced the power of water, my friends! And now we have access to our glorious battleships. Oh, those puppies are gonna look pretty nice. Especially love the carrier class too. Take a look at that. Beautimus, all right, well, with these guys on my side, uh, I am pretty sure we are now ready to go on an absolute warpath. Uh, looks like we're meeting our first fallen empire. 
That always scares me a little bit, but we're way too early in the game for them to care about me. Just little old tiny me. I'm just a little jellyfish. Blub blub. Don't bother me at all. Hey, you guys that we hate and have hated for a very long time who attacked me twice, guess what? I demand that you give me tribute and become my vassal. And if you refuse, which I know that you will, I shall drown you all! Wait, the Asgard system? All right, which of you Mad Labs named your star system Asgard? Come on, raise your hands. You all know you want to take a bow. Oh, nice. I can also now finally terraform tomb worlds. Excellent. Climate restoration. There shall be water for all! Oop, everything just turned blue over here, so I think these guys may have just given up. Excellent. Blue like the color of water, as all things should be. Mwahaha. <laughs> and soon we shall bring terror to the entirety of the galaxy. So at this point, I don't think there's just about anybody who really can challenge me at the end of the day. Uh, just going by the score here, I kind of have a rough sense of how powerful I am compared to everyone else. There's one other nation up over here somewhere that's actually somewhat dangerous, but besides that, we will easily surpass them, and I'm not even at my final form because I have so many destroyers left over, I can't even fill them all with battleships. We just need to go lose some fights and lose some ships so I can actually replace them with better ships. Or delete them, but, I mean, out of principle, I refuse to do that. And we have lots of ocean worlds. The only thing I wanted to do before we ended this video, but unfortunately we can't, is I wanted to go for the Colossus Project so that we can make use of the new Colossi for the aquatics and actually drown entire worlds. But alas and alack, I've already been recording for four and a half hours, so I think we're going to have to save that for another day. So how do we think this performed at the end of the day? Well, I do think that Aquatic is quite strong if used well. It definitely comes with some limitations, though. The inability to properly colonize several other worlds without huge penalties means that in the early game, other nations are able to scale past you a little bit faster than you might be used to. So you may have to bite the bullet and just accept that you're gonna have bad habitability for a little while, and then just hope you can terraform them a little bit later. At that point, you really start to become super duper powerful. As far as anglers as a uh, civic, it's not bad, it's not great either, or probably better picks. The one reason I kind of like it is getting all those extra consumer goods early on really helped me jumpstart my economy. And also, if we are materialists, you can set these guys to the academic privilege living standard, which means even more science at the cost of extra consumer goods, but who cares? You got plenty of those. So at the end of the day, I think aquatics are going to be a serious force to be reckoned with going forward. And let's be honest, those stinking ships just look so darn good. I love the appearance of all this. And then as far as the rebalancing of the game, yeah, as far as I can tell, it's definitely a bit more challenging than it was before. The AI is more competent which is really exciting. So thank you again to Paradox for sponsoring this video. It is, of course, very much appreciated. If you guys like what you see and you'd like to learn more, you can find out more information down below. The Aquatics Species Pack will be going for $10 on Steam. My name is Provis. Be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.